And now for the dinosaur of the day, Utah Ceratops, which was a request via Luke via Patreon. So thanks, Luke. Utah Ceratops, the name means Utah horn face. And the type species is Utah Ceratops gettii. And the species name is after Mike Getty, who found the holotype and helped recover fossils in the Grand Staircase Escalante Monument. It was named in 2010 by Scott Sampson, Mark Moen, Andrew Fark, Eric Roberts, Catherine Forster, Joshua Smith, and Alan Titus. And it lived in the late Cretaceous in what is now Utah. It was found in the Kaiparowitz Formation in the Grand Staircase in Utah. The holotype consists of a partial skull, and six specimens were found, including two partial skulls. It was quadrupedal, and it was pretty large, about 23 feet or 7 meters long, 6 feet or 2 meters tall, and averaged about 3 to 4 metric tons in weight. The skull was about 7 feet or 2.3 meters long, and it had hundreds of teeth in its dental battery, which it used to chomp down on plants. It had a large frill and three horns, but the horns over the eyes were not as large as the horns over a triceratops eyes. They were short and stubby and pointed to the side instead. It also had two holes in its frill to help reduce the weight of its skull, and its nose horns stuck straight up. Its horns were probably used to attract mates or scare off rivals, not really so much for defense. And it's been likened as a, quote, giant rhino with a ridiculously supersized head by co-author Mark Lowen. I feel like you could say that about most ceratopsians. Probably, but gosh, <laughs> seven feet long skull about 23 feet oh, long. Oh, they did say it had small post-orbital horns too, so mm -hmm. that makes sense. It was named at the same time as Cosmoceratops in the same paper in PLOS One called New Horn Dinosaurs from Utah Provide Evidence for Intracontinental Dinosaur Endemism. Cosmoceratops had more ornate horns and frills. Utahceratops was also larger than Cosmoceratops. Because Utahceratops lived in the same time and place as Cosmoceratops, and these two ceratopsians lived at the same time as other ceratopsids in Montana and Alberta, Canada, scientists think that there was some barrier in northern Utah to keep them from mingling, but it's unclear what that barrier could have been. In the Cretaceous, western and eastern North America was separated by a flooding of water, so maybe more water. Yeah, could be. Paleontologist Thomas Holt said to National Geographic News, quote, if you were a time traveler and you went back to the late Cretaceous, you would take a boat from the Gulf of Mexico and sail all the way up to the Arctic Ocean and you wouldn't see land. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. So Utah Ceratops lived on a floodplain with lots of swamps, ponds, and lakes in a wet, humid climate. Other dinosaurs in the area included the Tyrannosaurid Tertiphonius, Hadrosaurus Parasaurolophus, and Gryposaurus. Ceratopsians, Nasutoceratops, and Cosmoceratops. And if you'd like, you can see Utah Ceratops at the Natural History Museum of Utah. Yeah, we saw it there, along with a huge wall of a bunch of other Ceratopsians. That's really cool. Yeah. Definitely worth seeing. So Utah Ceratops was a Ceratopsian, and we talked a bit about Ceratopsians also in episode 30, Triceratops. And Ceratopsians were ornithischians that lived in North America and Asia. They had beaks and cheek teeth to eat fibrous vegetation. They also had a frill, which was used for either defense, regulating body temperature, attracting mates, or signaling danger. They probably traveled in herds and could stampede if threatened. 